What's up guys? Welcome back to the Strong Family Money Show. My name is Andres. In this episode of Business 101, we're going to go over how much risk you should have when you invest uh, for your future. Um, I usually upload these by themselves on as parents and you not have a plan to in your Disney Plus and all that stuff on your computer, right? You can use and when you're in a caloric deficit for to try to so uh, risk tolerance is a um, a term um, that's a really ambiguous term and uh, a lot of people really don't uh, delve into the details of what it really means um, so uh, it means the uh, the amount of variability in the return you're getting or the uh, or the market you know that gives you your return uh, an investor can tolerate uh, with the amount of money that they're investing um, so if you uh, are really tight on cash right you don't have a lot to invest and it really is um, all your money that you're you know able to invest then your risk tolerance is, you know, is pretty low. So you have to put your money into uh, safe, you know, investment vehicles that uh, I, I hesitate to use the word guarantee, but have the high likelihood of giving you a um, a return on your money that's consistent, and but most most importantly that is safe. Um, so you know. You wouldn't be putting your money into um, like a brand new, you know, IPO or startup um, that says they're going to be the next, you know, big thing, um, because the risk associated with that is is pretty high. Um, you know, you you might want to shy away from putting, you know, well, depending on how much you have, and if you put your money, obviously the most the safest bet would be uh, keep your money in cash, but then, uh, in you know. In, you don't really gain any money when you do that. It's it's safe in the bank, but you don't your investment really doesn't return anything. And then with inflation, you might end up losing some money. So it, depending on how you look at it, it might not be as safe as you as you originally think. Uh, you can put your money in stuff like bonds. Uh, returns are depending on which ones you get. And again, there's still some risk mitigation that you should go through when you invest in things like that. Also, um, it could be uh, a little safer you get a larger return compared to just keeping your money in cash um, uh, but um, in the next episode I'll, I'll explain the difference between the types of investment vehicles but it, uh, you'll get a return but it it's a pretty low return um, now if you put your your money into the stock market right um, let's say you that's where you can like in a 401k is where you can invest right you don't have enough money to you know, invest in like an investment property, which requires, depending on how you do it, you know, a, a large amount of investment upfront, right? If you're able to contribute with to your employer or personally to like a 401k or IRA, um, and you can do a monthly installment into, you know, those, those investment vehicles, uh, you probably might want to put your money into a, a, a fund that, you know, has given their data, and all that's available and wherever you're investing even when you invest in a 401k in your at your place of employment you should be able to get all the information you would get if you're a personal investor you should always research what you're investing in and uh, you might want to invest in something like a market fund like an s and p 500 fund where it takes a large amount of the stocks available in the s p 500 and has a little bit of a lot of different kinds of the stocks that are available and as uh, that way you are um, mitigating your risk based on the entirety of the stock market what large chunk of the stock market um, so if you're you know your risk tolerance is pretty low but you want to get as much return as you can and again I, I don't want to use the word guarantee because no investment is a guaranteed return uh, there is some amount of risk in everything that that you that you will do financially, whether it be it you know invest in the stock market or buying a house, there's always some risk involved. 
uh, as we saw back in the you know crash of the uh, housing crash of 2008 um, you know real estate isn't a slam dunk there have been other episodes like that in the past not as severe as this one but there really is no guaranteed return on any of your investment money so keep it with that in mind if you have a low risk tolerance um, you might want us to consider investing in something like a market fund uh, which you know spreads the risk over a large portion of the stock market now conversely if you want to um, have uh, if you have a lower risk tolerance um, well, I guess it depends on how you say it, right? If you want to keep your money safe, then you would have a low risk tolerance, right? If you want, to, if you have a higher risk tolerance, you want to take more of a chance. If you want to see if you can make more return on your money, um, then you would want to. Uh, then you can probably invest in that startup, or you want to invest in the individual stocks, or you want to look at a sector in general, right? Energy or or you know pharmaceuticals right if you want to take your money and individually pick certain stocks that you think are going to give you a return in the long run then your your risk tolerance is a lot higher right you can tolerate more risk um, and yes your returns probably will be higher you probably have more money to invest in general if you're doing that and but you also run the risk of losing a lot more money also it, it, everything goes goes hand in hand so if your risk tolerance is low you want to invest in like a market fund um, it, if you want to get some sort of return on the investment you make, if you have a higher risk tolerance, then you know, betting on in a, you know, some, you know, financial advisors or people, you know, they use that word as a descriptor. Uh, it, in some cases, it can be, you know, pretty accurate, right? You want to put your money in if you have a higher risk tolerance, tolerance into stuff that may give you a higher return. Uh, and again, in my next video, I'll delve deeper into what that exactly means. So how do you decide what your risk tolerance is, right? If you're a low risk tolerance that where you want to be safer, if you're a high risk tolerance, you want to take investments in vehicles that give you higher return. So you have to look at your time horizon, right? You have to look at how far out, how far out is, do I want my return to be returned to me, right? How old are you? Um, are you going to make how many job moves are you going to make from now until whenever the the end of your you know whenever you're going to cash in on this investment and when that is uh what's your portfolio size right how how much you know how much risk can my portfolio handle uh and then your personal comfort level right what do you how do you feel right if you're are you if you're an anxious person if you're a person that um checks the stock market every day and is worried about what's happening, and um, you know uh, has a, a sinking feeling in their stomach when they see red on the stock market ticker, right? Then you have a lower risk tolerance, right? You should probably, for your own personal well-being, not invest in things that um, are volatile and have a lot of movement, um, because that's just what the stock market is. It's just a bunch of movement, depending on investor. Uh, sentiment right they hear you can hear something investors can hear something in the news and that will determine how they move their next move in the stock market um, but if you're someone who understands that you know you don't lose your money until you cash in if you lose it and you actually don't get, win your money or, or um, inc have an increase in your investment until you cash in the the investment uh, if you're able to able to hold out until you know understand that you know you have a certain date that you want to hit and there are things you do the closer you get to that to that date to mitigate your risk um, then you might be able to take um, more chances than someone who who cannot um, the, the important thing is to is to always understand that as your portfolio grows as you you make more individually um, the more money you have invested in whatever you invest in you have to reassess your risk tolerance on a on a consistent you know schedule um, you know you don't want to um, you know put money in let it hang out and then you're three um, months out from when you want to cash in and then you look at everything and it's too late and nothing you can do with your money at that point right if you would say every month I'm gonna assess my accounts 
and determine if I have my money invested correctly, depending on what I want to do, uh, my current financial situation, how far out am I from that end date, um, you know, monthly, quarterly, probably better. So then you can move money around, uh, make more investment, make less, right? And that way it's, you're always in tune with what's going on in the market, but not so much that it's, it's uh, you become a, a, a day trader or, or investment banker, right? You, you, you really um, just be, you know, if you're just a you know, regular nine to five person, you really don't want to make investment, investing your money too much of your second job. It is important that you understand what's going on with your money, but you want to put it in things that, um, you know, if you look at them quarterly, and barring any anything exciting that's going on, if you look on a quarterly, that's enough time for you to make a decision on what to do with your money and your investments. So um, assess your risk tolerance. Sit down, you know, make a plan what you want, right? So the ones I have down here for your plan is what's your goal, like what's your end game, right? What do you want to do with the money? What's your timeline? How how long do you have to complete your goal? Um, your age and the stage of life you're in, right? Assess what what's going on in your life and what you're going to do, what you've done and what you can do going forward. Uh, how big of a portfolio size do you already have? And your personal comfort level, right? How, what kind of person are you and how much risk can you tolerate? Um, you know, and it works both ways, right? If you're a low risk, but you know, you get anxious that it's not uh, making movement fast enough in the direction you want, or if you're at a, a high risk tolerance, but you uh, are very emotional about what's going on in the stock market, right? You have to assess, you know, you as a person versus what your plan is so that it all works together. So anyway, that's risk tolerance. This is on the desk from the Strong Family Money Show. Thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you guys next time.